Hi, this is Phil, and I'm here to tell you all about the Capes and Lunatics Patreon. Don't miss out on our comic book creator interviews, including our monthly Chichester chats with comic book legend D.G. Chichester, superhero movie brackets, and our search for the worst comic book movie of all time, and many, many more specials, all completely uncensored. Access starts for $3 a month, full video when you pledge $5 a month. Check out the link in our show notes or go to patreon.com slash capesandlunatics. Hope to see you there. This is Luke of Parrot, and you're listening to the Capes and Lunatic Sidekicks podcast. This is Jerry Conway, and you're listening to the Capes and Lunatics podcast. Wait, I wonder who, who wrote the issue we're covering today. Is, uh... <laughs> That's right. We're going to give you some justice. Unlimited. Get some. That's right, kids. Welcome back to Unlimited Justice. I am Phil. Joining me as always, that maniac from Earth 2, it is. Hey, y'all. It's Loki. Oh, fire. Florida is on Earth 2. Fight me, nerd. Florida's on Earth 3. Be real. <laughs> That's true. How I think. Oh, yeah. Florida, New Jersey. So. Dead Earth. Superboy boy destroyed. What? New Jersey? Mm-hmm. All right. So if you were joining us last time, kids, uh, we're in the middle of a three-part uh, uh, Justice League, Justice Got Society it. team up. So this time we are on part two from Justice League of America 196. Uh... From November 1981. Uh, Countdown to Crisis. <laughs> Talk about your meta commentary. Yikes. All right. Yeah. All right. So, like I, like I hinted at, not so subtly, writer Jerry Conway, penciler George Perez, the man himself, inker Romeo Tangle, colorist Carl Gafford, letters... Ben Oda and editor Len Wein. All right. Uh, all right. So, like you said, we're in the middle of a crossover. The co- the battle continues as <laughs> Psycho Pirate takes on Our Man in a solo fight. Signal Man attacks his nemesis. Signal Man. Yeah, Signal Man. Sorry. Signal Man. Because <laughs> I want them to see me coming. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Moon Knight. Single man did it first. Ragdoll, tack- Ragdoll tackles the Earth 2 Flash. Poor Jay. Floronic Man, baby! <laughs> Floronic Man. No, not that guy. Little dates. Retur- resumes his struggle against his original opponent, Adam. Brainwave selects Johnny Thunder as his victim. Jeez. Mm. Killer Frost defeats uh, Firestorm by sucking all the warm life out of him. Hey-o. Hey-o. <laughs> Snatch his soul. Got that snow soul snatcher gripper gripper. <laughs> Whoa, Lilith. Come on. Superior puss. This podcast is rated team plus. Man. If, you're old and, if, if you were born while these books were out, you can take it. Hey, hey all. <laughs> Thank you for the drop. I mean, I was going to say I was live. I was three, but... <laughs> Uh, an ultra humanite vanquishes his nemesis, the Earth 2 Superman. Ultra, oh my god. Ultra human. I told you, watching the last issue of la- the last issue of uh, last, yeah, the last episode of Peacemaker, I was like, wait a minute, is that ultra humanite? Is that Grodd? <laughs> ultra humanite who likes the poop fetish. <laughs> Not Superman. I, how dare you besmirch Superman like that, Peacemaker? I know. Where'd you hear Although, that? Although, if it's the Henry Cavill version, I can see why he said that. Well, Google told him. It's all jokes and satire. Wink. Oh, Let's just my. say he's friends with Army Hammer and leave it at that. Oh! Just saying. Army, ha- Army Hammer. <laughs> if you know, you Not know. the baking soda. <laughs> Oh my! So yeah, so yeah, let's get into this one, Lil. Uh... Um. Okay. So 
Okay, yeah. Let me. Psych- Psycho pirate. This covers too much. <laughs> I do oh. like in the background how they have like um Flash like kind of flying around. Batman, even Batman is down. <laughs> hey, well, I know. Yes, yeah, this is before Bat God. Yeah, exactly. He's just on top of Superman, giving it to him. Hey, well. whoa! Look at look at those great look at Great Temple Superman, baby. Like they just don't make it like this anymore. Oh hell no! I mean. George Perez even made, manages to make a gorilla in a skirt and look uh, menacing. Come on, kid. But, you know, I always wanted Wonder Woman in a glass tube. <laughs> hey Look at Cheetah. She looks like she belongs with Josie and the Pussy. <laughs> I know. I know. Man, where's she putting that hand? Where's she putting, where's she putting them hands? <laughs> I never knew their mascara was right next door to the island of Lesbos. <laughs> <laughs> I've always said they should just shut up and kiss. It's why Cheetah's not dead and all their other nemesis are dead. I'm just saying. They all have a fetish for their main villain, bro. <laughs> Glad you got that whole one with Joker, Superman with Lex. Like they could easily stop them, but they're still around. <laughs> I'm glad you got that whole monologue out. It was quite the tongue twister. Ew. Ew. Grow up, Philip. <laughs> Come hey, on, look. You. look at that work. We can even do classy dick jokes. <laughs> hey, come on. They're all well, it classy. It's a dick joke, but. <laughs> if it's good enough for Joe Rogan, it's good enough for me. It made you, okay. stop. It made you stop and think for just one second. <laughs> it's all rape and murder, I'll tell you that. Look how they got Black Canary. Poor Black Canary. <laughs> hey, old. See, this was a tasteful bodysuit. Yeah, true. She I mean, the how... little jacket for modesty. I'm just saying. They're just like, oh yeah, we captured Hawkman. He's off to the side. Oh yeah, look, we got Wonder Woman. No we got cares, Batman. Yeah, no one cares about Hawkman. <laughs> let's, let's be honest. They've been trying to make Hawkman a thing for like 80 years. <laughs> okay. We captured three heroes, and the only one we've seen their nipples is Hawkman. Come on. <laughs> so unfair. <laughs> so unfair. <laughs> it's like just wait until the 90s. You can see bat nipples for days. And a cod piece to boot. Oh please, Ugh. everyone's got hard, everyone has hard nipples in the nineties. Come on. No, that's true. I think it goes along with that. You know, nobody, everybody is supposed to be really skinny and not wear a bra. You know that Kate, that Kate Moss era where everybody was heroin chic then. And- oh yeah, the, and in comic books, the nineties, man. What your waist was like? What half the size of your shoulders? <laughs> yeah, if you're or, lucky. Or a third of the size of your boobs. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. must be different there <laughs> oh my so yeah we get into the whole plot again ultra humanites basically told the earth one villains oh yeah if we all get get rid of certain heroes from earth one and earth two one of our earth will lose all their heroes and he's like ha i know it'll be earth two exactly oh someone chiming in with shoulder pad <laughs> damn it i wish i could who see it? who these uh you gotta let you gotta give facebook permission <laughs> Permission, yeah, yeah. Not that they care about that, but for looks and for looks. And again, looks. and again, we're getting Psycho Pirate. I don't know. I like Psycho Pirate in theory, but like the execution has never been the best. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's another one of our patrons, Lilith Hellfire, Justin the Owl Osgood. Well, hello there, Justin. Good day, sir. Good day. Hello, Justin. Ah, oh, yes. Good, good. Very good. Uh, but yeah, I'm so used to like Psycho Pirate being a raving lunatic. He's actually not a raving lunatic in this one for the most part, which is very interesting for me. Oh no, I think it's just that just after Crisis, that's a mess, messed him up for all time. I love how he's just, he is a petty king though. He's like, instead of your tedious little, uh, <laughs> he's just so dismissive. I love it. <laughs> I just love those faces. on the big screen, though, so, you know. There's the I ego. love those faces. I love who makes the faces. Like, be afraid. <gasps> <laughs> so, of course, oh, our man. Uh, our man. And they do the stupid, the man of the hour. <laughs> uh, Rex Tyler. Why is everybody a chemist doing hard water? Like, what is going on? I want to know what, what really is hard. 
hard water. What's that a code for? Little sugar bugger or what? <laughs> oh my. But no, he has to take his pill to last an hour a little, so Exactly. <gasps> blue chew. DC invented wait a minute. Did DC invent the blue the little blue pill? If it's good enough for Joe Rogan, it's good enough for me. True, he does. Yeah, yeah. Oh why? <laughs> I need that as a drop, please. <laughs> slow down, slow down. We need this for drops. <laughs> Don't pull it out unless you're gonna use it. That's true Iron for Man was always a clown, though. What? I can kind of see why they. Iron Man was always a clown, and I can kind of see why they never did go ahead and do this, uh, make the show back when Arrow was a thing. That was supposed to be a spinoff in the Arrowverse. Oh. Uh... And it just they can never really figure it out. It's like, oh, he only has powers for an hour. That's stupid. This isn't the fifties. And tr- and two, it's like, is it? I mean, in the modern age, is it weird to like? It's like, oh, hey, how's he get his power? Oh, he has to take a drug, you know? Yeah, we prefer it's to be like, all it, natural. It's like he drops something for an hour. He it, he drops something and gets uh, superpowers for an hour. So it's like, oh, so he's doing meth. <laughs> nice. Little Adderall, little pick me up, little Vivian. Oh my. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I mean. Uh, modern America could never judge. <laughs> exactly. Me and, oh, I like when we cut back to Earth One, though. Oh, yeah, because, yeah, Psycho Pirate knocks out uh, our man, and then, yeah, Earth One, Batman. <laughs> Come on, he's our man. He's a joke. Exactly. Uh, what is that? Some kind of signal? Must be signal, man. <laughs> oh, it that- hurts. It hurts so bad. <laughs> Him swinging on that line, just that cape flapping in the breeze. Oh man, blinded by the light. By the grip of his bat rope. <laughs> oh god, I can't, I can't. What is this, Batman sixty six? <laughs> Make sure you get your bat shark repair. <laughs> well, it's a Justice League issue. I know. Where is Angle Man? <laughs> Oh, your solar flare is your weapon. Oh, my God. <laughs> Even Angle Man wouldn't show up for this, Just. <laughs> oh, my God. Look at Signal Man's uh, cape. Oh, they didn't show us what the name of the movie was. Damn it. We know it's got to be Mark Zorro, right? I was going to say, yeah, Son of Zorro, something like that. Oh, look, cool cola. <laughs> I guess signal man. Uh, again, another guy mentally controlling people. Yeah. Like, we want I, a piece of the Batman. But I think the Red Tornado uh, segment was the best, honestly. Yeah. And he did mention he really liked Red Tornado. So now that I'm like rereading this with that in mind, it does seem like because a lot of people write him as a joke, but mm-hmm. he really gave him humanity, the irony, you know. Exactly. Hey, oh, get it, irony. <laughs> I get it. Oh, I get it. But no, I I was just gonna say like the difference between pre-crisis Batman and the Batman we get after Crisis. Bad because God, courtesy of Frank Miller. Yeah, he's not bad God. And then too, when Signal Man makes like the you know just the people on the street attack him, he's like, no, he knows my weakness. I won't hurt innocent people. And meanwhile, it's like yeah, if this right. was Stern Batman, he would be pun. He don't care if they're under mind control. He'd still be punching him in the face. Like, and you're stuff. all taking a trip to the hospital. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, I, th- I definitely think uh, the the red tornado stuff was great. It, they called it clean sweep though, and it's about a vacuum. And I was just like, um, we're mixing metaphors and analogies here. <laughs> and I, I know, I know, and I know oh, they have just cupcakes you- gets a shout out. Like, what the hell, man? With the registered <laughs> trademark and everything. We need the money, gimme, gimme. And I just, and this is why they just don't, they can't get away with this. The 80s were a crazy time. <laughs> hey, we would do that for people, you know, like Blue Chew, uh, TM. If it's good enough for Joe Rogan, it's good enough for me. I'm saying, if, hey, if Blue Chew doesn't want it, we can move on to Mountain Dew. Sorry, Phil. It's not going to be, well, you know, do you need Blue Chew? <laughs> I don't know. I don't no. know. Like, no, I, know don't, don't drink, I know you don't drink Mountain Dew, but that I was, was going to say, dream. I was going to say, do you need Mountain Dew? Because <laughs> I, I love Doritos and I love Mountain Dew. <laughs> so. 
So what what what's the dream lineup for Little Hellfire? Mountain Dew, Taco Bell. Uh... Yes, because actually they do do a collab with Pepsi. They do a pep, uh, collab with Yum Brands, which includes Remember? KFC and I love Pizza Hut. That's Ooh. my favorite fast food uh, pizza. Always has been, always will be. Thank you, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles brand loyalty. <laughs> I'm so old. I used to read books to get pizza. Same, buddy. Same. <laughs> Fuck I it. Think they still do it, but <laughs> you never hear about it. <laughs> yeah, you never hear about it. But I mean, I know he had to do it for purposes of the story. But I'm just like this. It just bugged me. This like really, Ragman should be taking down Jay Garrick this far into his career. I'm like, oh, you know, well, exactly this far into his career. <laughs> He's old. <laughs> I guess, but you know, I don't think he should have fallen for that bomb so easily. You know, Jay should have known. He was something distracted. Else. Okay, he's thinking about his wife. <laughs> hey, well, did I take did I take my hard water today? <laughs> but like, honestly, it's just like a commercial for Hostess cupcakes is the best thing about this issue. He's like fudgy icing, deep dark, delicious chocolatey cake, invaluable taste. <laughs> That just like honestly, if the Snickers ad would have been like that, <laughs> I would not have a problem with it. <laughs> exactly. I mean, all these issues are good, but I think out of the three, this is the most punch em up of the three. Yes, everything comes together. Yeah. <laughs> Adam and Floronic man. I I did I I find that that the, that pair up kind of um odd, but it works, I guess. I never really thought about it. Mm-hmm. But like a foam rubber pillow, just yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. He looks like, you know, Raggedy Andy, and that scares me. I think this might be why I don't like Raggedy and dolls, honestly. I never really thought about it now that I'm thinking about it. This might be the cause of it. <laughs> I know now it's like ragdolls just creepy here. It's just like ridiculous. Yeah. Um, I like um, you know, he's coming out of the use. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> he's like roast Adam and vine sauce, and I'm like, that don't look like vine sauce to me, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love Jay. He's triple jointed. <laughs> hmm, interesting. Oh my. <laughs> Yeah, but like the dialogue is so punny and like slash funny. I love it so much. Oh yeah, and like I said, I think I said last time too. I like that. I, you know, it take me took me more than five minutes to get through this issue. Oh yeah. Modern comics. Like it's just like detail to the background and stuff. It's just stuff that they don't do anymore. Yeah, and. I mean, I like what they did with uh, Johnny Thunder because it's like, yeah, you're not going to defeat that lightning bolt. So, but if you mess with Johnny's mind, so he can't use the lightning bolt, I guess. Exactly. Johnny Thunder's always been so weird. I know. I like him, but like, he's weird. <laughs> well, he's, you know, he's just like, I'll play, so holy, mo you know, he's basically Jimmy Olsen if the, you know, you gave him a magic genie. <laughs> did you mean Tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> hmm? Yeah, I, I guess. A I love bit. my I love my baby boy Jimmy Olsen though. I know. Got and his of course, own book and everything. Yes, and of course, and of course, Killer Frost and Firestorm makes sense because they are enemies. Enemies to lovers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, especially in Crisis. <laughs> but yes, she's yes, Flash Watchers. She's not a hero here. Either, but... Oh, burn. She's the one that makes the least amount of sense on the team. She's just there. As well, a she's... Spare. well, she's kind of gone now because they separated. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm just saying, originally, like, Team Flash kind of made no sense. I was like, Vibe and Killer Frost? Okay. <laughs> I mean, I like them, don't get me wrong, but they don't make sense in a comic book kind yeah. of sense. Oh, I'm did you see? on Team Flash, so. Did you see Grant Gustin just signed a deal for 15 episodes for a season nine? 15 episodes, you say? So is he going to be, is he, is he going to not be in a few episodes or are they just going to do 15? I think they're going to just do, I mean, honestly, modern TV, especially superhero shows should never be longer than 13 episodes because everything's filler. Yeah. 
You can basically like like what Agents of Shield eventually ended up having to do was do two stories a season, you know? Mm-hmm. And other shows oh. on cable have been doing that. You know, you got your season A and your season B, and CW never really picked up on that. But I think well, they're kind of trying to go towards that model for sure. Well, maybe they'll do like twelve or thirteen, and then like those last one or two are like if they do some kind of mini crossover or something. Yeah, I, I think that CW shows would benefit from only having thirteen episodes. It would keep the production tight and you know, oh, yeah. budget better and things like that. But yeah, um, I think they're really gonna try to push it to ten, and I think season ten will be the hopefully the final season that'll get us to twenty twenty four, right? Uh, I think so. Yeah. And so, yeah, then we have a 13 season episode or like, how many did Arrow have? Like eight, ten? What was it? <laughs> Arrow had eight and, you know, but that eight was a shorter. So, yeah, I mean, so Flash is going to so, go yeah, longer than Arrow. Can just wrap that up in season 10 and say, hey, we made it to 2024. Let's go back to that damn house. Wrap it up. <laughs> exactly. 20 Flash is standing there. <gasps> Justin, if Rick Cosman isn't on the show, I'm not watching it. Oh, I believe. Yes, I agree. He, I mean, he's not doing anything. Now he originally left the show because he got another show, um, that one show with uh Priyanka Chopra or whatever, where they do the mm-hmm. FBI agents or whatever, and then he got kicked out of that. So well, he's I, not doing anything. <laughs> well, I believe he's coming back at least for an episode or two because they're doing a time travel thing, uh, Justin. So yeah, wouldn't it be cool if they made him Thawne? Gave freaking Tom Cavanaugh a <gasps> and break. Oh yeah, it oh. was me, Barry. <laughs> Make them zoom. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Or just sabotage. I, I am very excited for the end of Flash. <laughs> Let's just put it to you that way. And then, what did I see? Is Diggle getting his own show? I said, yeah, that's what I was getting that confused with. I was like, has he showed up yet? Because I heard that, and I was like, I didn't know if he showed up yet. Because I don't well, really he like sho- Superman. Well, so. he he did he did one episode of like each series last season, and then no, he showed up this in, season though. He was supposed to. Show he showed up, up this season. Well, right now he should he showed up in an episode of Batwoman. Oh, that's why I didn't. Okay. Yeah, that's why you didn't see it. Yeah. <laughs> if he showed up on Superman, I wouldn't have seen it either. But I would have known about it at least. Nobody's talking about Batwoman. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I mean, Superman's been decent so far. I know. I prefer to just kind of watch those in batches, though, like three episodes at a yeah. time. I, I can't do the weekly with Superman. Well, I, I I will not spoil it for you, but it seems like they they pulled another swerve. It seems like remember in season one where it's like yeah, I did see like I think it was uh the week not this week but the week before last when I was watching it before Naomi uh-huh. um where like they were fighting his brother or some weird I was like okay <laughs> I gotta get caught up on that apparently. <laughs> what well, what looked like Doomsday was coming out of the earth and uh. They yeah, they're like, there's something there. Okay, yeah. Okay, gotcha. There, there's a twist. It's okay. it, it's yeah, yeah. Is it Jarrell? <laughs> no. Is it Smallville, Loth? He isn't the end game threat. <laughs> I mean, I can spoil it for you if you want, but it's... you can spoil it for me after we get off air. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, but, it's uh, kinda... yeah, maybe one day we'll uh, we'll talk about like a a super, the Superman show that's going on right now, like the finale or something. Yeah. Maybe we can invite Connor and Ray because I know they did the premiere. Oh, cool. Uh, oh, speaking of, yeah, Earth 2, Superman, and Ultra Human. <laughs> oh, he's like, I'm going to fight you in a zoo. My table! My table! <laughs> oh my god, he's got like that. He shoots Superman with kryptonite out of the thing on his chest. Yeah. <laughs> I love how they just have Stein as a floating head of guilt. <laughs> well, that's how they used it. That's how they did it all the time when they became Firestorm. Yeah. I know. It's just hilarious. <laughs> I know. I'm telling you, you roll your eyes, but we're going to have to do some of that. But some Firestorm from this era. Some of that Firestorm was great, but it's more towards the uh, the middle of the run. The first, the first couple of issues are so bumpy. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Probably more like Killer between. Frost is uh, their take on Emma Frost. Hashtag fight me. Oh my. Think about it. I don't see that much cleavage. <laughs> not, not that, but like, I'm just saying. Emma Frost, Killer Frost, DC tried it. They were like, eh. Emma Frost really isn't that great of a character anyway. <laughs> it's like something else. <laughs> True. But yeah, they capture these heroes and put them on this the plastic, the um, glass tubes on this merry-go-round. Yeah. 
and basically spin him out of the universe. Superman can't retire, though. That's what I never got. It's like, that's not how that works. Well, didn't they say in this that he's like kind of like semi-retired? Yeah. Not even semi-retirement for him. But again, too, yeah, I mean, he's of a certain age, and it's like, you know, and I'm not going to come out for a rag doll, but, you know, you know. <laughs> Burn. Oh, oh. Flash. <laughs> Burn. But it, like, Ultra Humanite shows up, you know. Like, All right, fine. That's Just when I think I'm out, they pull me back in. <laughs> oh. All right, so what did you think, Loth? I mean, cl- classic. Uh, love this era. I love build up and how every issue is important. Nothing feels yes. like filler in the, these three issues. Everything is like just building up to one issue to the next. It doesn't feel like a bridge or a filler. Every issue is important and I just kind of miss that in modern comic books. Oh yeah, definitely. Definitely. Because that kid, like, well, just to take it back to Kendra, like, you can literally skip probably like 10 issues and not miss a damn thing. Oh yeah, and in our modern age of like, you know, six issue or more arcs, it, I mean, there's certain storylines where like, you know, if you miss an issue, sometimes you're just like, yeah, I don't need it. I, I caught up. But yeah, here it's like, yeah, you should read, read every part. It's fine. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> X lives and X deaths, the Wolverine. <laughs> uh, uh, yes, hello. <laughs> I missed the first part because my store didn't get it. I guess he's get, he's going to be getting it in soon. So I just picked I I started reading on part two, the X death the Wolverine number one. And I was like, okay, I, okay, I got it. Anything. That's fine. Even though he wasn't in most of the issue, but I got it. Exactly. Yeah, All right. I think this is a solid, uh, this is a good example of how they used to write comic books, especially Jerry Conway, like unhindered, yeah. unfettered by like, you know, editorial mandates and, you know, writing from the train and stuff. Like, I think if they just revisited their history and they wonder why their uh, patronage is slipping, it, it goes back to the the modernization of comics. Like, it's don't be afraid to tell like a fun, ridiculous story. Everything doesn't have to be so serious and gloom and doom. You know? Yeah, I mean, I think they think some of this stuff is goofy, but it's like no it true is, comics. And it's comics. Lean into the skin, as Charlie would say. Yeah, true com- true comic fans. This is what we want. Stuff like this. Like, it's a it's an amazing team up. Like the, like everybody got a chance to shine and stuff. No no two prominent figures are just sticking out, mucking it up, chewing scenery. Naomi and Black Adam. Oh, <clears throat> oh, oh. burn. Just just saying. Just just saying. All right. I mean, let's get into that because uh, yeah, Justice the new Justice League issue seventy one, the latest bend this offering. <laughs> um, Ooh, so do you think thought, my battery is low? I will. Okay. So I will get my thoughts on Justice League seventy one. Uh, or Lil's just running from the latest bend this issue. <laughs> anyway, uh, I don't know if this is just again. You never know if this is what Ben this originally intended or if he did this because his run was coming to it. Maybe he thought he had a longer run, but yeah, this is 71. His, his last issue was 74. So I don't know if he thought he was getting more issues past that, but it, but it, I don't know. It just seems like he was setting up. Yeah. They mercifully cut his run short because okay. selling <laughs> the books, not Be- selling the people don't want it because like the last issue too, it seems like, you know, he's building up something big with the Royal flush gang, but here it's like, Basically, Which I was actually excited about, but you know, I know, but it's... but then I don't know if, again if his runs kind of in short because it's like the league pretty much takes out the the Royal Flesh Gang in like three two page splashes. It's just like boom, boom, boom. Oh, hey, that was a big fight. It's like real. And then the need to like also edge in Justice League Dark, like it's it's too much. Yeah, well, well, again, they want to charge more for the book, so they're like, hey, we need a backup. Yeah. But they've been doing that since Ben has started. Yeah, I know. So maybe it's him actually not wanting to write like a full fledged story. I don't know. I don't know because yeah, again, it seems like uh, the pace. I don't know if it's the pace. Again, you never know if it's because it's been this, but the pacing just seems off. Because yeah, they, they, you know, it seems like a big, huge thing with the the uh, rural flesh gang, and then it seems like boom, they got taken out in two seconds. And then it seems like we're wrapping up Lois Lane's brother. Thing like, you're not even getting 75, buddy. You're out of here before 75. <laughs> I'm trying to sell a big, super size 75. Get out of here. Beat it. We're going to kill him the right way. I, I think their, their love affair might be over with Bendis. I'm thinking. I mean, because. First we're thing and kill- only thing, 
now this? I don't know. We're going to kill Lorraine. They that show on HBO Max, but. Yeah, but I think they're getting him out of it. Has it been all. animated yet? Because if it hasn't been animated yet, then nothing's stopping them from pulling the plug. Because I mean, after the, this, the regular Justice League book, the only thing he's going to have is the uh, Justice League Bruce Legion, the superheroes, right? And that's only a mini series. I think we're finally unbendicing ourselves. So are they just scene. are they just shipping him off to the TV division? Worst places to be. At least they'll have oversight. A team. Yeah, and I think he might be even be like a better fit for like the TV side than the comics. I mean, I think these that he's, I think he has great ideas, but he definitely needs a team to bounce things off and refine things and say, hey, maybe we don't need all that dialogue. Yeah, I mean, look <laughs> at the you know with him and David F. Walker. I mean, yeah, oh, they're they're the dream team. Like they balance each other perfectly, honestly. Yeah, I mean, he seems like, like because the... David can get a little too political, and you know, it's probably yeah, Bendis that kind of like walks that back a little bit. And they find that blend, and he's like, "Maybe we don't need this." And you know, I think yeah. they're a great team together. So, so I'm not saying Bendis is bad, but I think he's more like the big picture man, and then he needs to give exactly. it to like a, he needs to give it to a team and say, "Hey, or, here, mold this clay and make you know a statue out of it." Yeah, and I, like I've always said, I think that it, in his career right now, where he would be a better fit is editorial. Yes, you know, it just comes a time in a comic book uh, creative's life where it's like maybe I need to just take on an editorial because, like, we talked about this with uh, DG Chichester all the time. You know, edit being an editor gives you uh, another skill set, and then when you come back to writing after being an editor, it can make you a better writer, so you can see the big picture and the little picture at the same time. You know? Yeah, I mean, you've done some good stuff, kid. Yeah, go to you know do some editorial for a while. And I think that's he would be a great fit because he does get along with so many people he is yeah. kind of like one of those um what do they call it linchpins and i think like yeah. i was so disappointed when wonder comics dissolved because i thought that that was a great fantastic idea and a lot of great things came out of it and he was the main guy over there really getting all the creative ju juices flowing and stuff so i, I mean i don't hate bendis i just hate mm -mm. Bendis writing my favorite characters i think yeah, that's that right. with oc characters for sure within a world that's already created if that makes sense What's I said? I mean, he has the knowledge, he has the talent, but I just, I don't, uh, lately at least, I don't like some a lot of this, the decisions he makes with these characters. And I get it. You, you do Superman. You want to go big or go home, but it's like, at the same time... Yeah, but then you gotta pay so it John off. John Byrne, he really didn't ruffle that many feathers when he... No, he just tweaked the origin a little bit, and exactly. you know. Exactly. So it's like, hmm, tweak, not overhaul. Especially, I think what really rubs people the wrong way with the Superman business thing is that we fought so hard for that marriage and the kids, and he literally just disregarded it. And that that, oh. that, that has been the decision that kind of like kind of caused all the controversy with him. I think I almost forgot about that. Did you did you read Superman and Robin number one special? I did. Were I, they I making... actually enjoyed it? How do you feel about it? I mean, I liked it. Were they making like meta commentary about Bendis? Because I mean, there's a lot of comments about just like, oh, I miss when we were like this, you know, you know, with Lois. Oh, I feel like we missed you a bunch of your childhood. And oh, that was definitely meta. Yeah, and, and then also they know that's what the fans were really excited for. You know, Superman being a super dad, and they robbed us. Exactly, and then even him and Damien are just like, oh, I missed when we hung out all the time and stuff, and. I mean, it's written by Tomasi, so is that just him saying yeah, they robbed me of this? Did get snatched away from him, so yeah. I mean, I you know me, Nothing I'm stopping feeling... you from sending them through a wormhole and de-aging them. Just saying, mm -hmm. nothing's stopping you, buddy. <laughs> but even the last page, when you know they're talking about John getting aged up, he's like, "Yes, it took me and my parents by surprise." <laughs> I see you tomorrow. I'm glad that we can have that tongue-in-cheek moment. And it's comic books. And like I said, they could always de-age them if they want. We could have a Normie yeah. Osborne situation for all I care. I do feel like we were robbed, like I was saying. So yeah. I, I but thought I, that I, was kind of funny. I think they, I don't know. I think DC likes what Tom Taylor's doing with the, uh, John's book. So oh, I don't yeah, think it's happening. It's great. Happening. But yeah. at the same time, we have, we live in a multiverse where anything could happen. True, true. They're not yeah, from I, this earth. <laughs> Thank you, Convergence. I mean, they, I mean, they must, they must want to uh, get this book, uh, keep it going because yes, he's crossing over with uh, Nightwing here soon. Which, like I said, I that's the issue that I'm most uh, anticipating because of that whole dynamic with uh, Dick and Superman, and now he gets to kind of do the same that you know Supes did for him with his son. Yep. So I think that that's interesting, and I think that's probably why they're doing it. 
to make it like a full circle moment. Mm -hmm. And then I don't know if it's the next issue after that or two issues after that, but yeah, then we're getting a Dick and Wally team up again. So. Mm -hmm. Not balls to the wall, dick to the wall. <laughs> Slow down, uh, you're yeah, the clock. Uh, the best character in Justice League written by Menace is Detective Shemp. So there's. <laughs> That's like from his story. I know. I know. It's bad. It's terrible. <laughs> oh my God. Did you. Uh, I'm all over the place, but did you. Have you been reading Flash? I mean, last issue or two, he's been teaming up with Justice League Dark. Oh, no, I haven't. On Gem, know, on Gem World. Comic book right now. Oh, oh yeah. really? Yeah, I'll catch up with it in trade because that's what it's there for, apparently. Yeah, so. but they're doing stuff with his kids too and stuff. So, oh, okay, we remembered he had kids. That's fine. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, they're playing him as a family man again. Yeah, you got I, uh, Linda and the kids. Yeah. Oh, okay. That, that sounds interesting. I'll, I'll catch up. Yeah, somebody remembered. <laughs> yeah, thank God. But, All right. Um, I... Yeah, just to see. My cup of tea right now. Um, I tell you, the best book, honestly, is Human Target. I oh really yeah, like this book. It's like, like I said, it's got that neo noir thriller kind of feel to it, and it's like, the most interesting take on Human Target so far. I oh mean, yeah, it's the obvious choice, but yet they haven't really done that with him. And I think this will make a great basis if they ever want to reboot the Human Target show for a third time. Yeah, very neo noir. This way. Very neo noir. I gotta solve my own murder. Yes. But the man who could become anyone is killed. Everyone's a suspect. I think Tom Taylor's found his his niche with like, you know, doing series on B level characters, you know? Yeah. I, honestly, Tom Taylor is DC's version of Chip Sadarsky at this point. Yeah. <laughs> I told you, I mean, his Mr. Miracle, I mean, I I didn't give two craps about uh the new gods. It, he entertained me with Mr. Miracle. The Adam Strange thing was good. Uh, I mean, Adam Strange of all people. He's like D tier. If we're going to be honest, he's like Exactly. Exactly. But yeah, like, like I, I, you know, I feel like um, Tom suffers from a lot of editorial mandate, mandates with the bigger characters. And I think that's why when he gets a chance with like the, the characters that are kind of more low profile, he really does shine. Yeah. Exactly. But yeah, get a lot of Justice League International in this series. This time, Blue Beetle. Yes! The real Blue Beetle. I could tell this is good because I'm just like, I'm reading this. I'm like, man, I miss this era. <laughs> uh, okay, so. Okay, we know nothing, so it's like we can uh, theorize. Uh, so is Ice the one who poisoned him? <laughs> No, that's too obvious, right? I don't, I don't know, because he's Hazard being all night. Well, as we see by the end of this issue, really nice to him. Yeah. Is she just like, oh hey, I'm yes, I'm going to treat you very well because you know I accidentally poisoned you. <laughs> like I said, I feel like that's too obvious, but I do want to shout out. Um. Uh, dang it! Hold on, the art. Um. Greg Smallwood. Greg Smallwood. I mean, he yeah. did everything. He did the pencils, the ink, and the colors. So, yeah. Uh, I think that that, like, when you get that, co that's why the book's art feels so cohesive. Yeah. And even just, like, yeah, like, some of the, some of the details. Just but, I mean, like, Trisha still said, saying, maybe it's because the rates are so low. You gotta do everything now. <laughs> exactly. Exactly, man. Maybe he's getting paid for, it's like, hey, if I pencil, ink, and, you know, do all this, man, I'll get paid the you know, two or three times. Okay. <laughs> But yeah, I, I enjoy this book a lot. I've, I've always enjoyed Human Target, but I also like Vigilante and Manhunter from the uh, the late 80s, those books too. And that kind of mm. gives me this vibe as well. Yeah. Also, you know, classic old suicide and, you know, all that stuff. Like, I've really been getting into it and trying to collect all the issues that I've been missing. Thank God my comic book guy is like the best guy in Florida. <laughs> But yeah, no, the human targets. But yeah, like I said, definitely giving me a nostalgic uh, Justice League International vibe. So I feel like we might get a smell out of that book, honestly. Hey, K kids, Jam D. Mateus is still in the game, man. Get him, <laughs> bring him back, bring him back. He was, he was, he just did that Justice League miniseries. And if you listen to That's our, what podcast, I was thinking, honestly. And if I mean, if you listen to our podcast, you know how much he loves the Justice League. So I mean, 
I guarantee you, you give him a halfway decent salary, he'll be like, damn it, I'm in. <laughs> you son of a bitch, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> Justice League, nine-year-old me says I'm in. <laughs> Yeah, so um, I just yeah, I'm I'm really happy with this book. I'm sad that it's a mini series. I think it's yeah. only getting six issues, right? Um, I forget. Because this doesn't feel like a penultimate issue. So yeah, no, I don't. Th- I think I'm pretty sure it's more than five. Uh, you know, look it up, but yeah, I think it was six when I looked. I don't know because that, that that Green Arrow Aquaman got seven, so. <laughs> Well, well, to, there's some weird agenda with Green Arrow and Aquaman right now, so I, I you can't. That's an outlier for sure. For sure, that's an outlier. Exactly. But I think Human Target would be a great fit on HBO Max. Maybe even give it to James Gunn. I don't know. Oh, I, I mean, think the most... that Human Target needs humor, but also I feel like the the mystery plot with the butterflies at the beginning like he didn't leave us hanging but we still don't know like are there two factions of good butterflies or not <laughs> i mean unless they're going to change it Lil, uh this I, i'm seeing the solicit for issue one 12 issues they're saying really yeah oh they have plans for human target then i thought it was six for some random reason yeah no i mean unless they changed it at some point yeah originally they're saying 12 we got a ways to go, kids. I'm happy. I know, we're really pleased. It's only a qu- like a quarter of the way. Or a... So yeah, Ice is definitely not the killer. <laughs> well, I don't know if we've even seen all the suspects yet. No, I don't think we have. So <laughs> that comes in like issue seven at that point. Then. Oh, does that mean we're going to get fire and ice in an issue? Ooh. You know what? We probably will. <laughs> But yeah, like this is a great book. I can't like stress it enough. I was like actually really surprised because of the Justice League International stuff that you hadn't uh, weren't reading it initially. So yeah, I know I, w- I wasn't sure I was on the fence, but then yeah, you recommended it. And yeah, yeah. It's Tom Taylor, how did you not pick this? <laughs> I know. I mean, again, so many books, but I'm just like, I mean, your recommendation is always good, but I'm just like, yeah, you know, Tom King, Lil Fay, I'll check it out. And yes, excellent. So yeah, I I can't. If, the, if you're gonna pick up one like extra book that's not on your pull list, I think it should be this one for sure. Exactly. So yeah. All right. Is that it? That's all we had for Justice League. Remember back in the day when Justice League was like a bigger deal. <laughs> I know. We had all kinds of Justice Leagues. We had Europe, international. I mean, we kind of have like Justice League and Justice League Dark, but. I really, we need another JSA book so desperately. I mean, I don't want to insult some of you people, but I mean, did the Snyder brand kind of hurt the comics? Well, they're trying to kill everybody off in Justice League. So, <laughs> maybe. I'm telling you, my theory is I think they're just going to build know, a loop. But Snyder has his fans, but they're not I buying think... comics. That's the thing. I know. I, I always say that. I'm like, all you people clamor for all this stuff, but it, you never support the books, so, you know. I put my money where my mouth is. Like I told you, I cut DC off yeah. for a very long time with certain books. And even right now, I'm not really, I'm only reading one of each big book, which mm. you know, I'm reading Superman, not action. I'm reading oh, yeah. I want to cover Batman, some. Batman, not detective. <laughs> I want to cover some of that someday, uh, Justin, if that's you. Justice League Task Force. Oh, there's crossover potential there because I believe the first four issue arc had Nightwing in it. Oh. <laughs> Poor Kristen. She doesn't know what's ahead of her. I know. All right. So anything else we need to cover? No, I think we, we wrapped it up nicely. Um, if you can find the well, did did you find yours? I, I have floppies, so what? Of the uh, Justice League books, the original ones that we covered. Oh, the uh the the, the Conway issues. No, I'm reading it on DC Universe Infinite, oh. so DC uh <laughs> DC finite <laughs> yeah this era i have some but not all of them so it's yeah it's kind of hit and miss in this era but no i was reading this and i was like man i need to go out and buy more of this era even though i have it on the app but there's just something about these old books specifically holding them it feels like so precious and it's such a different experience oh yeah especially just... with like the digitization of the the older books you definitely if you like the artwork you want to see it in person Exactly. Just the feel, the ads, just the smell of old comics. Yes. It, it's it's like like when you go to those, I don't know if you've ever been to those huge tent sales, but it's just something about mm-hmm. that. It's just like <sighs> home. Feels like home. 
Yeah, they get all these scented candles these days. Give me some old comic candles. Come on. <laughs> Come on, Yankee candles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or Bath and Body Works, I guess. Those are the only two candle companies I know. <laughs> I think it was a Yankee candle at the mall. Come on. <laughs> What's comic book. <laughs> I have, I have all, at least all the malls near my, my home are like within a, like an hour or dead like absolutely most of the stores are closed it's like just close the building already well I think I think well, ours is they're breathing new life into it because uh they put a casino in there so oh nice mm -hmm. can't wait till I can come visit in 2025 there you go go shopping and go gambling little hellfire <laughs> that's the dream baby that's the dream it's like right down the street from that Free Olive Garden. We ate at. Yes. Right down the street from that Olive Garden we ate at. Oh, okay. I, yeah. Yeah. yeah 25. <laughs> we're lucky. <laughs> if we're lucky. Oh, my. All right, kids. So, yes. Uh. Oh, wait. I was going to pull up the homework? I know. I'm going to pull up the schedule. Oh, wait. Are we back to uh, another ish, uh, episode of... Just no, we have one. No, we have one more episode because we're going to wrap up this arc, and then we get to the. Uh, ah, there we go. Then we get to Secret Origins Part Two in two weeks. <laughs> like, don't Wait. jump the gun, Lolo, Damn it! Hey, oh, yeah, then we're going to finish this arc. Yeah, Justice. <laughs> we wrap up this arc, Justice League of America one ninety seven in one week, and then two weeks. Yeah, Secret Origins Part Two from the Justice League animated series. Let us know if you want us just to review or do you enjoy the live watches? Yes, exactly. Send us your thoughts, kids. Make make your thoughts known. And how do you do that? You can email us, capesandlunatics at gmail.com. The old way. Yeah, yeah. Like our maws and paws used to do. Maws it's... and maws. <laughs> <laughs> it's legally admissible evidence. Cape Saint Lunatics at gmail.com or call the voicemail 614-382-2737. That's 614-38-CAPES. All right. Uh, and remember, follow Alt Unlimited Justice on uh, Facebook, Twitter. Join our J Justice League, Justice Society Facebook fan group. Find links to all the social medias and Facebook groups for all the shows we do, all the Marvel and DC stuff we do. Uh, subscribe to this YouTube channel because, once again, every episode gets its own video. So, can no see good little... hand gestures for this episode, though. I know what happened. It's Justice League. Be classy, man. That's true. And it's Saturday morning. I know. Well, that all right. Means nothing to me. <laughs> no, that's true. She's like, time is a construct. Uh, anyway, and so are pants. Hey, hey oh. <laughs> all right so yes and if you can please subscribe to our patreon once again we don't we're not the league we don't have billionaires back at us, back at us. <laughs> or green arrow yes we're on our own so every contribution is appreciated but three to three or five dollars gets you the exclusive content get create creator uh interviews early mr dg chichester every month early uh, and Patreon exclusive, uh, the superhero movie brackets. We're going to find the worst superhero movie. So it has already begun. The first episode is up. So see if 1990s Captain America beat Howard the Duck. It's a quack in good time. Uh, and Don't while you watch. Don't make me throw my shield at you. Hey, oh. <laughs> Don't make me take that shield out of the bag, Philip. <laughs> you never think, take what's in the bag. Anyway, so. And while you're watching, uh, get yourself some Capes of Lunatics uh, merchandise or Capes of Lunatics Sidekicks merchandise. Uh, find everything all in one place. That's Linktree, L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E. -E. Yes, the cups. It's nobody's business what's in your cup. Get yourself some Capes of Lunatics merchandise at Linktree, L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E -E slash Capes and Lunatics. And again... Not just crappy uh, merchandise. This is quality merchandise. For quality. Legitimate Bing. business people. <laughs> For quality. Bing. Sounds like a plan. Have a good night. Lilith Hellfire, where can people find you? <laughs> if you nerds want to hang out with me on the interwebs, you can find me on Twitter at Lilith Hellfire, on Instagram at Lilith Hellfire 69 and of course, on TikTok, making the spicy comments at Lilith Hellfire 69 Duh. <laughs> Hello, Megan. <laughs>
tap, tap, tapping my way downtown. <laughs> Cut me, bro. <laughs> Bye, Felicia. Uh, trying to keep it classy. <laughs> I'm searching for classy uh, drop. Good luck. I know. <laughs> All right, kids, thank you for joining us again in one week. We wrap this arc up, Justice League of America 197. Superheroes, supervillains of two Earths, Jerry Conway, George Perez, wow, it's crazy. Oh, my God. I was talking to Will about that Death of the Justice League. Did you see that promo pick? Hal Jordan's right in the middle. I'm like, are they building a league around Hal Jordan? <laughs> <laughs> All right, kids, come back. Get more justice. Unlimited justice. Get some.